Hey everybody, Atlas here again for Nexus Core. I have for you a standard Pale Moon deck profile, which likely will get updated in March as they get more support. Um, I don't have plans to build this in premium because I sold all of my G stuff to a friend of mine when the reboot came out. Because I was like, I don't want to have too many Excel clans. And uh, it turns out I have a lot of Excel clans. And you're going to see them in coming months. But for now, let's just uh, let's get started. So uh, our starter is Entertain Messenger, like every other uh, starter. When you write on top of him, you draw a card. It sucks that they didn't bring back Hades Ringmaster, the, the one from, you know, BTO3 way back in the day. But, you know, it does what it does. Um, next we have four copies of Golden Beast Tamer. So she's a grade 3, uh, 12k with an Excel gift. So on Vanguard Circle, during your turn, if you have five or more units, all of your front row units get plus 3k. So this counts her and any number of rear guards you have. This is very good because it allows you to hit force Vanguards easier than you normally would. So if you have, you know, any uh, booster behind her and you hit that five requirement, then there you go, there's 23. So... Good still, so, uh, and also free. Suck at Maelstrom. The other still is uh, when she attacks, you can counterblast one, put a card from your hand into your soul, and call up to two things from your soul to rearguard circle. So this is how you do most of your multi-attacks. It's the vanguard you want to be on. Um, I found that you typically can kill when you ride your second grade three and get a second Excel circle, because then you can do lots of wacky shit, but... Yeah, Pale Moon's an Excel deck that behaves like an Excel deck, and it does it pretty well. So, good grade three. Next, we have three copies of Nightmare Doll Alice. So, um, grade three, 12k, Excel gift. You're going to be hearing that a lot. Um, so, when you ride her, so when placed in the Vanguard Circle, you call one Workeroid, meaning the race down here by the clan at the bottom, uh, from your soul, and that unit gets plus 5k till end of turn. So that's completely free, which is cool. Um, I will let you know which cards are workeroids, so you know, you know how many targets you have in the deck as the profile goes on. The other still is on rear guard circle. At the end of the battle, she attacked, so she didn't have to hit like her old version. You counterblast, soul blast, put her into soul, and call a non-grade three card to rear guard circle. So the idea here is you put her on an excel circle, attack with her, and then suck her back in and call something else back out. So. Very good. Uh, it's a decent first ride because you get a free, you know, get a free unit usually. And then on subsequent turns, you ride Golden Beast Tamer on top of her and then call her out and start doing weird multi-attack shenanigans. So good card. I have her at three. Then we have two copies of Comicality Chimera. So grade three, uh, no gift. Maybe you won't be hearing that a lot. 12k. On rear guard circle, when it attacks, you soul blast one, put one other rear guard into the soul. And he gets plus 5k until the end of the battle. And then if you didn't countercharge during this turn, you countercharge one. It sucks that you can't spam the countercharging, but it is nice to have some countercharge mid-battle phase, so it allows you to continue your attacks. Um, it also allows you to put things into the soul that want to be called out later. Kind of an important card. You don't really need more than two, though, because riding it hurts a lot. So, um, good card. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. By the way, Alice herself is a worker raid, so if you ride an Alice on top of an Alice, you can get an Alice. Cool. Next up, we have four copies of Nitro Juggler, our first worker raid, aside from Alice. So as of right now, not counting, you know, the Alice you ride, we have seven. Or six, sorry. So that's six worker raids. The still is when you ride or call him from hand, you can look at two cards from the top of the deck, Put one card in soul and the other card in the bottom of the deck. So this is good for early game as it allows you to uh, build your soul up. It kind of sucks if you get two triggers because then you got to put a trigger in soul and put the other one on the bottom of the deck and there's no way to shuffle. Cool. Awesome. Um, this is what your the bulk of your early game rushing is going to be doing is just calling these because they've already done their job after you call them and then they can be used to intercept with later. Or, you know, they're just kind of warm bodies. But uh, if you ride this, turn two, and then ride Alice, that's a 14k beat stick. So, cool. Good card for now. I wish there was a way to shuffle. Um, three copies of Jumping Jill. So there's another Workeroid. So we went from six to nine. A uh, 
grade two, 9K. So when she's placed on rear guard circle from soul, you put one other rear guard into your soul and call a non-grade two in the back row. So it sucks that you can't, you know, call her to an Excel circle, put a rested thing in, call a non-grade, you know, a non-grade two back out on the same Excel circle, but I'm guessing that Bouchero did that on purpose. However, uh, it allows you to um, make a new column. So if she gets called out by, say, Alice, then uh, you can suck a rested thing back in and get something in behind her. And then there's a 17 or 20k column if you're on uh, Golden Beast Tamer. So, yeah, it, it's a very good card. It's a workeroid you typically want to get out with Alice or just Beast Tamer herself. Allows you to extend your attacks pretty good. You don't necessarily need four, though, because it's like... It only works when called from soul, and you don't necessarily want to be calling two out at the same time, because again, you can't call the front row, so. Um, three copies of Amaranth Beast Tamer, so grade two, 9k. On Vanner Rear, when it attacks a Vanguard, you can pick one of the rear guard and put it into your soul, and she gets plus 3k till end of battle. So this allows you to, if you're uh, on Beast Tamer and you have, uh, you know, five or more units and you do her skill, well, you know, after you do that, you still have to have five or more. But if you do that, that's 15k or 25k on an Excel circle. Or if you're being boosted, that's 23k. So yay, more force numbers. It also allows you to extend your attacks with another card you'll see later. So very good. Um, one copy of Peekaboo. There's another worker right. That's 10. Um, so when he's put into your soul from rear guard circle, you can counter blast soul blast. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards and put it into their soul. And then if you chose a grade 2 or greater card, you Soul Charge. So this is a mild control element for Pale Moon. Um, it's not necessarily mandatory. This is a promo, and, you know, maybe they're a pain in the ass to get for you. In my case, they were just giving them out at Locals. But uh, this dude, you know, you have a mild control element in Pale Moon, which means you can put things like Promised Daughter away, which Shadow Paladin can't do that. Um, you can put you know, mobile hospital, you can put away the deer, you can put away, uh, what are other important cards? Neonectar doesn't care. You can put away, um, important shit. That's all I'm going to say, because my mind is blaming right now. Um, yeah, put, put Blaster Blade away, because you can. That's fine. Um, only for them to rewrite Alfred early and get it out again anyway. The important thing is it also allows you to trade maybe a crappy soul for a better soul. So the way I see it, you're soul blasting like a trigger. Maybe you soul charge something good off it. It's like another try. But typically it's like a, you know, use it for a lark or, uh, you know, if you have decks that have units that are a pain in the ass. One copy of the Dreaming King of Comedy. So I run this for uh, Force Clans. It's, his skill is once per turn when your other rear guard is placed from soul, he gets 5k till the end of the turn. So... He's 14k by himself, um, that means that, uh, you know, it, it's still 22 with, uh, like an 8k booster. If you do, if you do, you know, Golden Beast Hammer still, that's 25 with GA force numbers, but also that, uh, it's free. That's the important thing, is that free is good in this deck, and if you call this plus something else off of Beast Hammer, the skill's already live. Um... So, very good card. It's good as a one-of. You don't necessarily need more, because, again, not a worker right. So, that's ten worker roids. I think that's, you know, only three... Only three of your twelve worker roids are not... Or, twelve grade twos are not worker roids. So, Alice should have enough targets. Um, four copies of Starting Presenter. So, grade one, 8k... Uh, when you ride or call him from hand, again with you from hand, you can soul charge. Uh, the other skill is when you ride on top of him, you can put a card from your hand into your soul and soul charge, and then you can car call the card you soul charge from rear guard circle to rear guard circle. I don't know if anyone's ever, you know, done this before, but nine times out of ten I end up getting a trigger. That being said, it's a free card, kind of. Um, let's say you put away, like, a Jumping Jill from hand into soul, and then you get a free 5k booster that could have been trigger-checked, but, you know, whatever, I'm not complaining. The important thing is that it helps you build soul, so, cool. Um, four copies of Purple Trapezist, 
So this is arguably the most important card in the deck. 7k grade 1. Uh, when she is put into rear guard from Soul, you Soul Blast a copy of Purple Trapezist, which can include the one that has just been sucked in, and then you call a card from your Soul to rear guard circle. So this is where most of your uh, multi-attacking is done outside of Golden Beast Tamer. So a good place to typically put this is on an Excel circle, because with Golden Beast Tamer, that's a 20, uh, you know 17 to 20k attack. So you'll go attack with that, and you know maybe attack with Golden Beast Hammer, get Jumping Jill out. Jumping Jill sucks this in, and then calls a new grade one, and then Purple Trapezus Soul Blasts herself, and then you get a new card on the Excel circle where Trapezus, you know, was a second ago. Um, you can also do this with Chimera or Amaranth Beast Hammer. So this is a very, very, very important card. It's a good thing it's like a dollar triple R, as most triple R's are. Um, so, yeah, definitely a four of. It does kind of suck if you have to use it as a Vanguard booster, because then even with, uh, you know, Golden Beast Hammer's effect, it's 22, which is not hitting force numbers. But, you know, still a good card. Still a four of. Um, four copies of Midnight Bunny. So when she boosts anything, you Soul Charge. So, yay, more Soul Building. And then also, if she bo uh, boosts an attack that hits, again, anything, it doesn't have to hit a Vanguard. You counter blast, put her into soul, and then uh, call a non grade one from your soul to rear guard circle. So if you happen to be running low on field, a, a thing to do if they let this hit is you'll suck her in, call out jumping Jill on the other side. Jumping Jill pulls in the thing that Bunny was just boosting and makes a new column out of it. You're mostly going to be using it for the first skill, but the on hit pressure of being able to get more attacks is uh, quite good in Pale Moon. Um, I do kind of wish I had the Congratulations promos, but I'll take what I can get, so. Good card. Hooray for great ones. Now for the triggers. We have four draw PGs, as most decks run in Standard. Draw PGs are way better than having to waste great one slots on PGs, and then also a fifth draw trigger. So, being an Excel deck that has a problem with maintaining a hand, extra draws are always nice. Um, this is, like, let's see, it, also having this in hand means you can put it in soul for Golden Beast Tamer and not really worry too much about it if your hand's running low. But yeah, five draws is something that I found to work pretty well. Uh, also five front triggers. So, um, Pale Moon is, like I said, an Excel deck that behaves like an Excel deck. And for that to work, that means that the opponent taking triggers on damage make, you know, Sticks in your craw. So uh, I like having um, fronts, but at the same time, I am not like um, a lot of, you know, a lot of Excel players will just do eight front, four draw, but I ran two crits. And my reasoning for this is that if the opponent thinks that a crit is coming, maybe at some point in the future, they are more likely to guard your Vanguard or whatever else. Whether the crit has been soul charged, put in damage, or you guard with it, the opponent knowing that a crit is out there makes them more fearful of whatever it is you're doing. That's also why with the fronts and the crits, I ran different, like I didn't just do four sky high, one hoop, I did three, two, and I did one of each crit because it, there's a psychological aspect to that, which, uh, you know, it might just be pseudoscientific mumbo-jumbo, but I choose to believe it, so, you know, take with that what you will. Then, four heals, because uh, I'm not I'm not as hyper-aggressive as Gold Paladin, so doing the all crits, all fronts, all drug, yeah, that's not, I can't do that. So I need, I need the heals to be heals. Um, and then, you know, Excel Circles, because it's an Excel deck. So, yeah. So that was the deck, uh, you know, it, there's going to be an update whenever this com uh, the, the leader set comes out in March, where Pillman will get more support, but rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time.